Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode 34 of my Create Mod series. Now today I'm going to show you all of the different ways you can transport items inside of the Create Mod, and I'm going to dive really deep into all these processes. So even if you're a veteran, I encourage you to watch the video. Uh, also, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe as I make a ton of Create Mod content and you are not going to want to miss it. Also, I've already made a video talking about everything to do with fluids, such as transporting them. So that should have just popped up on the screen. So if you're interested in that, check that out. And I'm also planning to do a video on how to move rotational force through your machines. So if you're interested in a video like that, definitely subscribe. Uh, but anyways, I'm done with the intro. So let's let's jump straight into the video. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is the most basic way you could transport items inside of the create mod, and that is with mechanical belts and shafts. So that is simply placing down a shaft, placing down a belt and connecting it to create a moving mechanical belt. So uh, the way this works is that you can take some items and let's just say we throw lime dye on here. The lime dye will stick to the belt and move to where it needs to go. Uh, cool thing is in the newest create update, you can also dye these belts with different types of dye. Uh, and then you can use a water bucket to clear it. You can also use like brass casings and andesite casings to actually make it look a little bit nicer as well. So there's there's some options to these mechanical belts. Continuing off of mechanical belts, you could also attach funnels to them. And there's two different types. There's an andesite funnel and a brass funnel. Uh, I've just taken an andesite funnel here to show you and how this works. So you can see we have a chest connected. So let's just grab some oak planks. And if we throw them into the andesite funnel, it will now just continue to place one item out onto the mechanical belt and it'll continue to move and pop off. So we'll grab these for now. Uh, and then also with andesite funnels, you can also transport items vertically in a sense. Shoots are gonna do a little bit better of a job, uh, but andesite funnels, you can see we have this arrow pointed downward into this chest. So if I throw an item into this funnel, it will be placed into the chest. Uh, something interesting on this one as well is that you can use redstone to actually lock an andesite funnel. So currently there's an item sitting on top. It's not going through. If I shut the redstone signal off, it will now go inside. Uh, something else to kind of go over is I've just talked about andesite funnels, which is the basic version of them. There's also the brass version. Now, brass versions uh, have a couple unique properties to them. So uh, as you saw with the andesite funnel, it only brought out single items versus brass funnels can bring out entire stacks. Or if you aim at them, you can filter them to select how many items you'd like to bring out at once. So if I turn this on, you can see right here it immediately brought out 64 iron ore. Meanwhile, over here, it's only bringing out a single one of them at a time. Something else pretty cool with this is you can use filters to actually filter brass funnels. So you can see on this filter, I could set it so it's only filtering iron ore. Uh, you could also use an NEI mod or just enough items mod to assign filters to only select certain items if you want to do that. Uh, there's some options as well in here, such as a deny list um, and ignoring data, respecting data, things along that for a regular filter. And then there's also attribute filters, which the way that this works is, let's say I throw my iron ore in here, I can make it so it's based on attributes. So it's only going to allow uh, placeable items, crushed items, smelted items. You can even do is in the group of building blocks was added by Minecraft or is tagged with forge and ores and things like this. Uh, so you can get really specific on how you want to kind of sort items depending on what you're looking for uh, with funnels and other objects that can use filters. So the next thing that we were brought to is shoots. Now shoots are going to get really unique very quickly. So the basic version of a shoot is if we grab some items, uh, let's grab our light blue concrete. If we put it in a chest upwards, it'll actually fall through the chute and get placed into the bottom. And that, that happened so quick that we didn't even actually see it. Uh, so perfect to transport items vertically. And you can also use shoots to kind of go diagonal. Uh, and the way this works is if we break it, we place a shoot on top of uh, this chest. We can then just right click on the side and it will transfer kind of uh, basically like a twisted route. So again, we grab our light blue concrete, we can throw it upwards and it will be placed right into this chest, uh, as you can see. Uh, as you can notice probably is that some shoots are closed, some are open. You can just right click with a wrench to open them up. Uh, something else is also useful is engineer's goggles. Uh, for this process and that's because you can use shoots to transfer items upwards and downwards So you can see right here We have an encased fan which I'm going to go over a little bit more in detail a little bit later Attached to shoots uh, with a power source below it and if I throw in let's say our light blue concrete 
you can see that the light blue concrete is actually going to go upwards and keep transporting through the chute. So this is actually a great way to transport items vertically uh, instead of having to use tons of belts and things along those lines. Now, to get to that, we can also transport items through belts. So you can see right here, I've built an infinite loop of items going into chutes with an encased fan, getting placed onto a mechanical belt, and then they're actually getting pulled off by a chute uh, and being thrown onto another belt. So again, this process here is not necessarily useful, um, but I'm showing that you can pull items on and off of belts without needing to use like mechanical arms, funnels, things along those lines. So this next part brings me to smart shoots, which is a newer thing for the create mod. Now a smart shoot is essentially a brass funnel version of a shoot. Uh, it allows you to transfer uh, based on filters and other different properties and things along those lines. So you can see right here in this chest, I have orange concrete, I have light blue concrete, the filter is set to light blue concrete, and then I also have taken a redstone signal to shut off the smart shoot. So as soon as I activate this thing, it's already immediately transferred our light blue concrete down below, but it's kept our orange concrete in here as well. So again, you can attach this um, to just chests. You could have also taken this smart shoot and placed it right where this shoot is, and it would have only picked up the light blue concrete, and if I threw orange concrete on here, it wouldn't have taken it. Uh, so you can use this again to pull certain items off of belts or any kind of other odds and ends that you're thinking of. Now, something I quickly want to go over is an encased fan. Um, now, an encased fan is going to be super useful in our power sources video, uh, but I do want to go over that it does allow you to transport items via the ground. So you can see right here, I have an encased fan with a power source, and it's simply pushing air into a brass funnel that has our arrow facing towards the chest. So if I throw some light blue concrete on the ground, it'll get pushed towards this funnel and eventually actually get sucked right into the chest. So... Uh, kind of useful for an encased fan. Um, I think encased fans are a little bit more useful with shoots. I'm really finicky and I get scared that items might despawn if they're on the ground. So I don't prefer this direction, but I did want to show this as it is an option. All right, so our next thing that we're going to go over is our tunnels. Now, uh, we're going to break this down pretty well because tunnels are a very niche thing inside of the create mod. So uh, right here, we have a belt coming in. It goes into a tunnel and it outputs on the farther side. It outputs on the closer side. So one input to two outputs. So let's let's throw a stack of blocks on here and we'll see what happens. So you can see our stack is going into our tunnel and it's going to do something very weird and very niche. So what it's done is it's taken a single block and outputted it to the side and it's taken the other 63 and outputted it to this mechanical belt. Now, you as a viewer is probably looking at this and going, when in the world did I ever want that? Truthfully, I've never found a use for this, um, but this is going to build upon um, our next couple of steps. So what we have over here is just an aesthetic. So all I've done here is place several brass tunnels next to each other, and you can see it comes up with a sweet design, a nice design to kind of hide things on a belt. Uh, especially if you're trying to make your buildings look a little bit nicer, you can use tunnels to kind of hide um, anything you didn't want to showcase on a belt. So I figured I'd show that off if you're looking for more of an aesthetic. Uh, but our, what we're really brought to is our brass tunnels. Now, over here, I have my brass tunnels set up with blue concrete and orange concrete. And essentially, we have one input. We have our blue concrete that's supposed to come out on this side, and we have our orange concrete that's supposed to come out on this side. So this can be an easy like sorting system that we've set up. And something else to point out is that if we take a wrench and aim at the top of this tunnel, we can actually select um, some different options. So you can see right here, we have when multiple outputs are available to actually split um, basically the stacks. So if we did have blue concrete and blue concrete, we can have it so it was 32 and 32. Um, we can also even do a force split, a round robin, uh, a force round robin, and we can even prefer the nearest uh, for if any outputs are able to be duplicated. Uh, and we can even randomize it and synchronize inputs, uh, all different, different instructions that we can use for tunnels. So let me let me just showcase it with just the basic um, where we have blue and orange concrete. So let me grab our orange concrete, throw our blue concrete onto the funnel with our orange concrete. And you can see as it goes through, our orange concrete goes in one direction and our blue concrete goes in the other direction. So this is a nice way to kind of split our items if we're if we're only looking to basically separate two different things coming on one single belt.
All right, so we're not done with tunnels just yet. There's another pretty cool use to this. Uh, so what I have here is I have one input coming in, and then we have three separate outputs with tunnels completely side by side by side. So what we've done here is it'll input any type of items, and then I've set the filter to be blue, orange, and pink concrete, so it should actually separate all of these belts. So if I grab the blue, orange, and pink, and I throw it all down on to this chest, or onto this belt, excuse me, you can see that as the concrete goes through, it'll actually sort all of our items onto different belts depending on what the filter was. Again, really easy if you want to start sorting some items. Super useful when you start building a lot of the farms that I've built in the past uh, where there's a chance that it's going to output like seeds as well as the item that you're looking for. You can use this to just separate whatever items you're looking for uh, or whatever you would like to pull out of the machine. Uh, so that brings us to our next machine. So our next machine is one of the coolest machines that I get to talk about, and that is our mechanical arm. So uh, the generic way of a mechanical arm working is that it has one input and one output, and then it continuously, as it's activated by power, will pull the items off of one area and place them onto the other. Um, something to just kind of showcase on how to do this is that you shift right click and it will pop up saying, oh, it's going to take items from whatever block you've clicked on. You right click on the next one and you right click twice and then it'll say it'll deposit it and then you just place it down and then now we'll simply just go ahead and take items from one area and place them on the other. Now to build upon this topic, uh, you can also use a redstone signal to pause the machine. So if I unpause them on this one, what I've done is it has one input and two outputs. So you can see that right here, it's outputting onto this depot and it's also outputting onto this depot. Now, if we use a wrench and we aim at the side, we also have settings just like the brass um, tunnels that we talked about before. So you can see it says when multiple outputs are available to round robin, we can also um, force round robin, we can prefer the first target uh, and a bunch of different other options. So depending on what you are looking for, you can select upon what you're, what you're trying to do for your machine. Now, this is something that I didn't know about until I actually started making this video. So what I've done here is I have nine mechanical crafters, and depending on how new you are to the create mod, you might not know what these are. In general, it allows you to auto craft things, and I'll have a video pop up on the screen if you're interested in that. Uh, but we have our mechanical crafter set up here, and I've taken nine brass funnels in the back and connected them to the back. And here I've set up uh, basically the recipe to make TNT. And I have a single mechanical arm, that auto takes items from these two depots that are outputting sand and gunpowder and will place them into the back of all of these brass funnels. And what's really cool is these brass funnels will communicate to the mechanical arm and tell the mechanical arm that it can only take a certain item. So by default, this will auto place all of the items needed to make TNT into here without needing to have multiple mechanical arms with multiple different outputs and inputs. Uh, saves a lot of time. And it's really cool because it's really easy to set up. So I'll, I'll show you on how this works is that we, we r shift right click on one depot, shift right click on the other depot where we're getting our items. And then all we have to do is say, hey, deposit the items into these funnels here and we'll place it down and it will auto sort whatever items need to go where because of these brass funnels. Uh, because you can't really set filters on mechanical arms. This is a nice way to basically set a filter in a way for our TNT production. So this now brings us to one of the newer items in Create, and this is our weighted ejector. Now, a weighted ejector is great for transferring items vertically, and also it's a really cool animation with behind it. So right here, we have our weighted ejector, and I've set it to basically output our item onto this andesite funnel that we talked about prior and place it into the chest. So if I throw an item onto our weighted ejector, it'll be launched up into the air and be placed into this chest. Uh, you can also use a wrench to, if you look at it, you can see I've set it to this andesite funnel. But if we look at the very top right here, um, you can see that we have it set currently for the ejected stack size of a star. So that means it's not set to a certain stack. So if I change it to five blocks, that means that it will not actually activate until I put five blocks on, and then we'll shoot five blocks onto here. Another kind of little niche thing that you can put on a weighted ejector, so if you're only trying to transport a stack at a time, 
you can wait until stack is placed on the weighted injector and then have it shot into the andesite funnel. So now we're going to combine a lot of the things that we just went over inside of this video. Uh, and the very first thing that we're going to talk about is this weighted ejector that I've placed here next to a brass tunnel and her belts. So we have an item going in and then we have our default of two different outputs. But what I've done here is I've set a weighted ejector um, against our brass tunnel. So what this is doing is uh, if I take out my wrench and look at this weighted ejector, is it set to 10? So that means that it can only take 10 blocks and then it will finally launch. So if I take a stack of light blue concrete and I throw it onto, or I threw 58, but I throw 58 onto um, this tunnel, what it has done is it's taken exactly 10 blocks and placed it onto this mechanical belt, and it's taken the rest and thrown it onto this mechanical belt. So now with this weighted ejector, we have the ability to choose exactly the right amount of items that we want to take and throw the rest of them down this belt. So if you're only looking for 10 items of a certain section to automate a process, you can do that. You can separate that with a tunnel and a weighted ejector and a mechanical belt. All right, so the next process that I'm going to talk about, is, or the next block, is our portable storage interface. Now, this is a very useful block, something that if you're using the Create Mod, you're going to use this. This is the best way to build farms, the best way to do many different things inside of the Create Mod. Now, I'm not going to go over on how I've built this farm. If you want to check out on how to build this farm, uh, there's a video that just popped up on the screen. But the way the portable storage interface works is that you have one attached to an entity, so some kind of machine that's moving around, uh, and then you have one that's stationary, and whenever these uh, two portable storage interfaces interact with a block empty in between, it will actually transfer the items and place them into the chest. So you can see it's already harvested some wheat and some seeds, and whenever it harvests these items, it will continue to place them into a chest. Again, great way to build automated farms that will auto-deposit right into a chest for you. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know that I just threw an absolute ton of information at you all at once in one video. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are going to watch this video and are brand new to the Create Mod. And you probably have absolutely no idea what just happened in the last 10 minutes of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will respond to almost immediately. I can re-explain things. Hop in my Discord. Try to build machines and mess around with things. That's the best way to learn the Create Mod. Now, uh, I use a lot of these machines in a lot of my automated videos where I show how to like automate kelp and how to automate cake and things along those lines. So feel free to watch those videos and you can get a better understanding on how to use these machines. Uh, I made this video so that if you want to attempt your own machines and you're trying to figure out the best way to transport items, that you can hop into this video, click on a timestamp and go, oh, that's the best way for me to transport a certain item in this situation. Uh, but yeah, I think that's I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys in this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like. Feel free to subscribe as I'm going to be definitely dropping a lot more videos such as transporting energy or rotational force and things like that. Um, but I think I think that was the best thing for making this type of video uh, just to kind of throw all the information at you and see what sticks. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys all in the next one.